The Forest Brothers, also Brothers of the Forest, Forest Brethren, or Forest Brotherhood, Estonian, Metsavenid, Latvian, Meza Brali, Lithuanian, Misko Broliai, were Estonian, Latvian, and Lithuanian partisans who waged a guerrilla war against Soviet rule during the Soviet invasion and occupation of the three Baltic states during, and after, World War II. Similar anti-Soviet Eastern European resistance groups fought against Soviet and communist rule in Bulgaria, Poland, Romania, and western Ukraine. The Red Army occupied the independent Baltic states in 1940–1941 and, after a period of German occupation, again in 1944–1945. As Stalinist repression intensified over the following years, 50,000 residents of these countries used the heavily forested countryside as a natural refuge and base for armed anti-Soviet resistance. Resistance units varied in size and composition, ranging from individually operating guerrillas, armed primarily for self-defense, to large and well-organized groups able to engage significant Soviet forces in battle. <laughs> <laughs> Background <laughs> <laughs> Origins of the term The term Forest Brothers first came into use in the Baltic region during the chaotic Russian Revolution of 1905. Varying sources refer to Forest Brothers of this era either as peasants revolting or as schoolteachers seeking refuge in the forest. Topic. Caught between two powers Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania gained their independence in 1918 after the collapse of the Russian Empire. The ideals of nationalism and self-determination had taken hold with many people as a result of having the independent states of Estonia and Latvia for the first time since the 13th century. At the same time, Lithuanians re-established a sovereign state, which had a rich former history, having been the largest country in Europe during the 14th century, but which was occupied by the Russian Empire since 1795. Allied declarations such as the Atlantic Charter had offered promise of a post-war world in which the three Baltic nations could re-establish themselves. Having already experienced occupation by the Soviet regime followed by the Nazi regime, many people were unwilling to accept another occupation, unlike Estonia and Latvia where the Germans conscripted the local population into military formations within the Waffen-SS, Lithuania never had its own Waffen-SS division. In 1944 the Nazi authorities had created an ill-equipped but 20,000-strong Lithuanian Territorial Defense Force under General Povilas Plechevicius to combat Soviet partisans led by Antanas Snikas. The Germans, however, quickly came to see this force as a nationalist threat to their occupation regime. The senior staff were arrested on May 15, 1944, with General Plechevicius being deported to the concentration camp in Salispils, Latvia. However, approximately half of the remaining forces formed guerrilla units and dissolved into the countryside in preparation for partisan operations against the Red Army as the Eastern Front approached. The guerrilla operations in Estonia and Latvia had some basis in Adolf Hitler's authorization of a full withdrawal from Estonia in mid September 1944. He allowed any soldiers of his Estonian forces, primarily the 20th Waffen SS Division, 1st Estonian, who wished to stay and defend their homes to do so and in the fate of Army Group Courland, among the last of Hitler's forces to surrender after it became trapped in the Courland pocket on the Courland Peninsula in 1945. Many Estonian and Latvian soldiers, and a few Germans, evaded capture and fought as forest brothers in the countryside for years after the war. Others, such as Alfons Rebane and Alfreds Riekstens escaped to the United Kingdom and Sweden and participated in Allied intelligence operations in aid of the forest brothers. While the Waffen-SS was found guilty of war crimes and other atrocities and declared a criminal organization after the war, the Nuremberg trials explicitly excluded conscripts in the following terms. The tribunal declares to be criminal within the meaning of the charter the group composed of those persons who had been officially accepted as members of the SS as enumerated in the preceding paragraph, who became or remained members of the organization with knowledge that it was being used for the commission of acts declared criminal by Article 6 of the charter, or who were personally implicated as members of the organization in the commission of such crimes, excluding, however, those who were drafted into membership by the state in such a way as to give them no choice in the matter, and who had committed no such crimes. 
In 1949–1950 the United States Displaced Persons Commission investigated the Estonian and Latvian divisions and on September 1, 1950 adopted the following policy The Baltic Waffen SS units are to be considered as separate and distinct in purpose, ideology, activities, and qualifications for membership from the German SS, and therefore the Commission holds them not to be a movement hostile to the Government of the United States under Section 13 of the Displaced Persons Act, as amended. The Latvian government has asserted that the Latvian Legion, primarily composed of the 15th and 19th Latvian Waffen SS divisions, was neither a criminal nor collaborationist organization. The ranks of the resistance swelled with the Red Army's attempts at conscription in the Baltic states after the war, with fewer than half the registered conscripts reporting in some districts. The widespread harassment of disappearing conscripts' families pushed more people to evade authorities in the forests. Many enlisted men deserted, taking their weapons with them. Summer War With the German invasion of the Soviet Union on June 22, 1941, Joseph Stalin made a public statement on the radio calling for a scorched earth policy in the areas to be abandoned on July 3. About 10,000 Forest Brothers, which had organized themselves into countrywide Omikaitse Home Guard organizations, attacked the forces of the NKVD, Destruction Battalions and the 8th Army Major General Lubovtsev, killing 4,800 and capturing 14,000. The Battle of Tartu lasted for two weeks, and destroyed a large part of the city. Under the leadership of Friedrich Kurg, the Forest Brothers drove out the Soviets from Tartu, behind the river's Parnu, Emajogi line. Thus they secured South Estonia under Estonian control by July 10. The NKVD murdered 193 people in Tartu prison on their retreat on July 8. The German 18th Army crossed the Estonian southern border on July 7–9. The Germans resumed their advance in Estonia by working in cooperation with the Forest Brothers and the Omikaitse. In North Estonia, the destruction battalions had the greatest impact, being the last Baltic territory captured from the Soviets. The joint Estonian-German forces took Narva on August 17 and the Estonian capital Tallinn on August 28. On that day, the red flag shot down earlier on Pick Hermann was replaced with the flag of Estonia by Fred Eyes only to be changed by a German Reichskriegs flag a few hours later. After the Soviets were driven out from Estonia, German Army Group North disarmed all the Forest Brother and Omikaitse groups. Southern Estonian partisan units were yet again summoned in August 1941 under the name of Estonian Omikaitse. Members were initially selected from the closest circle of friends. Later, candidate members were asked to sign a declaration that they were not members of a communist organization. Estonian Omikaitse relied on the former regulations of Estonian Defence League and Estonian Army, insofar as they were consistent with the laws of German occupation. The tasks of the Omikaitse were as follows Defence of the coast and borders Fight against parachutists, sabotage, and espionage Guarding militarily important objects Fight against communism Assistance to Estonian police and guaranteeing the general safety of the citizens Providing assistance in case of large-scale incidents fires, floods, diseases, etc. Providing military training for its members and other loyal citizens. Deepening and preserving the patriotic and national feelings of citizens. On the 15th of July, the Omikaitse had 10,200 members. On the 1st of December 1941, 40,599 members. Until February 1944, membership was around 40,000. The Partisan War By the late 1940s and early 1950s the Forest Brothers were provided with supplies, liaison officers and logistical coordination by the British MI6, American, and Swedish Secret Intelligence Services. This support played a key role in directing the Baltic resistance movement, however it diminished significantly after mi 6 Operation Jungle was severely compromised by the activities of British spies Kim Philby and others who forwarded information to the Soviets, enabling the KGB to identify, infiltrate and eliminate many Baltic guerrilla units and cut others off from any further contact with Western intelligence operatives. The conflict between the Soviet armed forces and the Forest Brothers lasted over a decade and cost at least 50 thousand lives. Estimates for the number of fighters in each country vary. 
Misiunas and Tagapara estimate that figures reached 30,000 in Lithuania, between 10,000 and 15,000 in Latvia and 10,000 in Estonia. NKVD units dressed as forest brothers committed atrocities in order to discredit them and demoralize the civilian population. In Estonia In Estonia 14,000 to 15,000 men participated in fighting between 1944 and 1953. Estonia's Forest Brothers were most active in Voru County and the border areas between Parnu and Lan counties, with significant activity between Tartu and Viru counties as well. From November 1944 to November 1947, they made 773 armed attacks and killed about 1,000 Soviets and their supporters. At its peak in 1947, Estonia Forest Brothers controlled many villages and towns, and Soviet supply transports required significant armed escort. August Saab, one of the last surviving Forest Brothers in Estonia, was discovered in 1978 by KGB agents posing as fellow fishermen. Instead of surrendering, he leapt into the Vohandu stream and hooked himself to a log, drowning. The KGB insisted that the 69-year-old Saab drowned while trying to escape, a theory difficult to credit given the shallow water and lack of cover at the site. There were numerous attempts to hunt down relatives of the Forest Brothers. One of the Estonians who managed to escape the deportation was Taimi Kreitzberg. She recalled that the Soviet deportation officials less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 took me to Voru, I was not beaten there, but for three days and nights I was given neither food nor drink. They told me they were not going to kill me, but torture me until I betrayed all the bandits. For about a month they dragged me through woods and took me to farms that were owned by the relatives of Forest Brothers, and they sent me in as an instigator to ask for food and shelter while the Czechists themselves waited outside. I told people to drive me away, as I had been sent by the security organs. In Latvia In Latvia, preparations for partisan operations were begun during the German occupation, but the leaders of these nationalist units were arrested by Nazi authorities. Longer-lived resistance units began to form at the end of the war, their ranks were composed of former Latvian Legion soldiers as well as civilians. On 8 September 1944 in Riga, the leadership of the Latvian Central Council adopted a declaration on the restoration of the state of Latvia. The adoption of the declaration was an attempt to restore de facto independence of the Republic of Latvia, in hopes of international support and by taking advantage of the interval between changes of occupying powers. The declaration prescribed that the Satversmi is the fundamental law of the restored Republic of Latvia, and provided for establishment of a cabinet of ministers that would organize the restoration of the state of Latvia. Some of the most prominent LCC accomplishments are related to its military branch, General Janis Karelis Group the so-called Karelyesi, with Lieutenant Roberts Rubini's battalion which carried out the armed resistance against Waffen-SS forces. The number of active combatants peaked at between 10,000 and 15,000, while the total number of resistance fighters was as high as 40,000. One author gives a figure of up to 12,000 grouped in 700 bands during the 1945–55 decade, but definitive figures are unavailable. Over time, the partisans replaced their German weapons with Soviet ones. The Central Command of Latvian Resistance Organizations maintained an office on Matisa Street in Riga until 1947. In some 3,000 raids, the partisans inflicted damage on uniformed military personnel, party cadres particularly in rural areas, buildings, and ammunition depots. Communist authorities reported 1,562 Soviet personnel killed and 560 wounded during the entire resistance period. One account of the typical actions of the Forest Brothers is provided by Talrids Krastens. A reconnaissance soldier in the 19th Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS 2nd Latvian, he was recruited with 15 other Latvians into a Nazi stay-behind unit at the close of the war. Escaping to the forest, the group avoided all contact with local residents and relatives, robbing trucks for money and maintaining an apartment in the center of Riga for reconnaissance and operations. At first they operated by assassinating low-level Communist Party managers, but later focused their efforts on attempting to kill the head of the Latvian SSR, Vilas Lacys. The group recruited a Russian woman working at the Supreme Soviet of the Latvian SSR who informed them about Lacys' transportation schedule. 
They set up a roadside ambush when Lacey's was traveling from Riga to Yermola, but shot up the wrong car. The second attempt likewise relied on a female Russian collaborator, but one who proved to be an undercover NKVD agent. The entire group was apprehended and sentenced to prison in 1948. The Latvian Forest Brothers were most active in the border regions, including Dundaga, Torkeln, Lubana, Aloha, and Lavani. In the eastern regions, they had ties with the Estonian Forest Brothers, in the western regions, with the Lithuanians. As in Estonia and Lithuania, the partisans were killed off and infiltrated by the MVD and NKVD over time, and as in Estonia and Lithuania, Western assistance and intelligence was severely compromised by Soviet counter-intelligence and Latvian double agents such as Augusts Bergmanis and Vidvud Sveiks. Furthermore, the Soviets gradually consolidated their rule in the cities, help from rural civilians was not as forthcoming, and special military and security units were sent to control the partisans. The last groups emerged from the forest and surrendered to the authorities in 1957. Topic: In Lithuania. Among the three countries, the resistance was best organized in Lithuania, where guerrilla units controlled whole regions of the countryside until 1949. Their armaments included Czech Škoda guns, Russian Maxim heavy machine guns, assorted mortars and a wide variety of mainly German and Soviet light machine guns and submachine guns. When not in direct battles with the Red Army or special NKVD units, they significantly delayed the consolidation of Soviet rule through ambush, sabotage, assassination of local communist activists and officials, freeing imprisoned guerrillas, and printing underground newspapers. Captured Lithuanian Forest Brothers themselves often faced torture and summary execution while their relatives faced deportation to Siberia cf. Quotation. Reprisals against pro-Soviet farms and villages were harsh. The NKVD units, named People's Defense Platoons known by the Lithuanians as place. Stribai, from the Russian, Istrebateli, destroyers used shock tactics to discourage further resistance such as displaying executed partisans' corpses in village courtyards. The report of a commission formed at a KGB prison a few days after the October 15, 1956 arrest of Adolfas Romanowskis, Vinagas, chief commander of the Union of Lithuanian Freedom Fighters, noted the following. The right eye is covered with hematoma, on the eyelid there are six stab wounds made, judging by their diameter, by a thin wire or nail going deep into the eyeball. Multiple hematomas in the area of the stomach, a cut wound on a finger of the right hand. The genitalia reveal the following, a large tear wound on the right side of the scrotum and a wound on the left side, both testicles and spermatic ducts are missing. Uuzas Luxa was among those who managed to escape to the West, he wrote his memoirs there and was killed after returning to Lithuania in 1951. Pranas Conscious was the last Lithuanian anti-Soviet resistance fighter, killed in action by Soviet forces on July 6, 1965 some sources indicate he shot himself in order to avoid capture on July 13. He was awarded the Cross of Vitus posthumously in 2000. Benedictus Mikulis, one of the last known partisans to remain in the forest, emerged in 1971. He was arrested in the 1980s and spent several years in prison. Topic. Decline of the resistance movements By the early 1950s, the Soviet forces had eradicated most of the Forest Brother resistance. Intelligence gathered by the Soviet spies in the West and KGB infiltrators within the resistance movement, in combination with large-scale Soviet operations in 1952 managed to end the campaigns against them. Many of the remaining Forest Brothers laid down their weapons when offered an amnesty by the Soviet authorities after Joseph Stalin's death in 1953, although isolated engagements continued into the 1960s. The last individual guerrillas are known to have remained in hiding and evaded capture into the 1980s, by which time the Baltic states were pressing for independence through peaceful means. See Sajudis, The Baltic Way, Singing Revolution. Topic. Aftermath, memorials and remembrances. Many Forest Brothers persisted in the hope that Cold War hostilities between the West, which never formally recognized the Soviet occupation, and the Soviet Union might escalate to an armed conflict in which the Baltic states would be liberated. 
This never materialized, and according to Mart Lahr many of the surviving former Forest Brothers remained bitter that the West did not take on the Soviet Union militarily. See also Yalta Conference. When the brutal suppression of the Hungarian Revolution in 1956 did not bring about an intervention by, or a supportive response from, Western powers, organized resistance in the Baltic states declined further. As the conflict was relatively undocumented by the Soviet Union the Baltic fighters were formally charged as common criminals, some consider it and the Soviet-Baltic conflict as a whole to be an unknown or forgotten war. Discussion of resistance was suppressed under the Soviet regime. Writings on the subject by Baltic emigrants were often labeled as examples of ethnic sympathy and disregarded. Lars' research efforts, begun in Estonia in the late 1980s, are considered to have opened the door for further study. In 1999, the Lithuanian Seimas Parliament enacted a declaration of independence that had been made on February 16, 1949, the 31st anniversary of the February 16, 1918, Declaration of Independence, by elements of the resistance unified under the movement of the struggle for the freedom of Lithuania. A universal, organized, armed resistance namely, self-defense, by the Lithuanian state, did take place in Lithuania during 1944–1953, against the Soviet occupation. The goal was the liberation of Lithuania, relying upon the provisions of the Atlantic Charter and a sovereign right acknowledged by the democratic world, by bearing arms against one of the World War II aggressors. The Council of the Movement of the Struggle for Freedom of Lithuania constituted the supreme political and military structure and was the sole legal authority within the territory of occupied Lithuania. In Latvia and Lithuania, Forest Brothers veterans receive a small pension. In Lithuania, the third Sunday in May is commemorated as Partisans Day. In 2005, there were about 350 surviving Forest Brothers in Lithuania. In a 2001 lecture in Tallinn, U.S. Senator John McCain acknowledged the Estonian Forest Brothers and their efforts. Topic: <laughs> Forest Brothers in popular culture. The Canadian film Legendy Lujad, creators of the legend about the Estonian Forest Brothers, was released in 1963. The film was funded by donations from Estonians in exile. The 1966 Soviet drama film Nobody Wanted to Die Lithuanian, Naikas Nenoreho Murti by Soviet Lithuanian film director Vytautas Zalikovichius shows the tragedy of the conflict in which a brother goes against the brother. The film garnered Zalikovichius the USSR State Prize and international recognition, and is the best known film portrayal of the conflict. A 1997 documentary film We Lived for Estonia tells the story of the Estonian Forest Brothers from the viewpoint of one of the participants. The 2004 film Utterly Alone Lithuanian, Vienui Vieni, portrays the travails of Lithuanian partisan leader Juuzas Luksa, who travelled twice to Western Europe in attempts to gain support for the armed resistance. The 2005 documentary film Sterna tells the story of Isabelle Villamite codenamed Sterna and Sparnuada, an American-born Lithuanian who moved to Lithuania with her family in 1932. A medical student and pharmacist, she was an underground medic and source of medical supplies for the partisans, eventually becoming a district liaison. She infiltrated the local Komsomol communist youth, was discovered, captured, and escaped twice. After going underground full-time, she was suspected of having been turned by the KGB as an informant and was nearly executed by the partisans. Her bunker was eventually discovered by the KGB and she was captured a third time, interrogated and killed. The 2007 Estonian film Sons of One Forest Estonian, Umetsa Pohad follows the story of two forest brothers in southern Estonia, who fight with an Estonian from the Waffen SS against the Soviet occupants. The 2013 novel Forest Brothers by Garrett Roberts, follows the fortune of a disgraced British Navy officer who returns to Estonia in 1944 for British intelligence. Many of the people from his past who aid him have taken to the forest, during the ongoing conflict between Germany and the Soviet Union. The Last Forest Brother The last known Forest brother was Janis Pinups, who came out of hiding only in 1995. He had deserted from the Red Army in 1944 and was presumed missing in action by Soviet authorities in Latvia. He was rendered unconscious during a battle and left for dead. 
He decided to return home, where he started hiding in the nearby forest out of fear that his family would be deported, if his desertion was discovered. About 25 years after going into hiding he was forced to seek medical assistance and started acting more freely thereafter. Still only his siblings and, later on, the nearest neighbors were aware who he was, even the rest of his family only learned he had not been killed in the war after he came out of hiding. See also Anti-Soviet partisans Battle of Maritza Notes and references Topic. Further reading Topic. External links Genocide and Resistance Research Center of Lithuania Lithuanian Taurus District Partisans and Deportation Museum Museum of Occupations of Estonia Occupation Museum of Latvia Vinui Vieni Utterly Alone 2004 film about the Lithuanian Forest Brothers, based on the real-life events of Uuzas Luxa aka Uuzas L. Damantas War Chronicle of the Partisans, Chronicle of Lithuanian Partisans, June 1944 to May 1949, prepared by Algis Rupainis Forest Brothers, Fight for the Baltics official YouTube channel of NATO, 2017.